Welcome everybody to Economy of Trust show. Today, my guest is Sergei Chibari, a fascinating man in many different respects of life, a great friend of mine, but he is now a world-renowned expert in biomass. Uh, this is something what we together call green oil of 21st century. Today with Sergey, we're going to talk about bioeconomy and how Ukraine can benefit from bioeconomy, which can spur many, many industries, and how carbon credits come into play, which becomes a financial instrument. Enjoy the show, but always please click like, share our, subscribe to our channel, share with your friends, and always the please support United Students of Ukraine. All the links right there in the description of the show. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Sergey, hello and welcome to Economy of Trust show. Good to see you. Hi, Gendry. Great to see Hi. you. And uh, today we're going to talk about what we, you and I, for a long time, believe would be one of the biggest industries long term for Ukraine, uh, which creates tremendous benefits from energy independence uh, to creating a whole new green economy in Ukraine. Uh, you are the world expert, in my view, and one of the top world experts, in my view. Uh, and I'd like you to give a quick overview of your background, starting from your days uh, as an agri-trader. Please. Well, <laughs> uh, actually, I'm in uh, RAS and uh, in biomass business already more than 12 years. Uh, in agriculture, more than 28 years. Uh, I graduated from uh, Kyiv State University. I'm a molecular physicist. It was uh, 1993, and that time, you know, the Soviet Union collapsed. So I had to uh, look around and find find a way how to feed myself and my family. So somehow I I started as a forwarder, uh, grains forwarder, exporter. In other words, in other words, you spent your career in the agro sector, and obviously you came to a conclusion uh, which allows uh, you to believe that biomass, uh, biomass as a whole, is the most one of the most critical raw materials for the future of green economy around the world, and you identified miscanthus as the culture. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about miscanthus and give us five top things about miscanthus that people should know. Regular folks. Uh, well, one remark, Henry. Uh, actually, when I uh, started to uh, deal with biomass, I didn't think in the way you <laughs> you just said. Now I was. I'm I was sure. I'm sure that, stock, you know? that's part, part of our entrepreneurial <laughs> path. So <laughs> yeah, how how it happened? Uh, we built together with my partner uh, pellet plant in Ukraine. This pellet plant was working uh, on straw. And immediately after we start up the plant, farmers around understand that we are fully dependent from from them. Right, exactly. You know, I mean, your, your history, yes. so, Sergey, your history of business operation led you to believe to do what you did and develop this whole uh, new way of uh, looking at biomass and using miscanthus. Again, I want to come back to my question because I want to get to specifics uh, right away. So miscanthus, it's a perennial that has been around for you know thousands of years uh, coming out of Asia. But I'd like you to go over five thick, you know, big things that miscanthus gives the humanity and how we can use it now to create green economy. Five things. Okay, first of all, this is perennial crop, this is grass, which is uh, given the stable and unified uh, feedstock uh, every year. So you are planting miscanthus only once, and then within 25 years you have biomass. So basically biomass is kind of residual on biomass. You don't have to put the seeds every year into the ground, it grows for three Right. Right, okay. So right. that's number one. So that's a great economic... That's number one. Uh, number two... Uh, Miscanthus uh, is the most energy efficient crop in terms of uh, energy return, yeah? Because you are investing a certain amount of money uh, first year, and that's it. Then you are spending money only only for harvesting of biomass. Yeah, so the, the, the comparing with other technical crops, this is the most efficient one crop. Excellent. Number that's three. Number two. Yes, number three. Number number three, uh, it is sterile, natural sterile hybrid, so it is not invasive. I mean, you can control plantation. Explain that, Ernest, please. Explain what non-invasive means. 
Well, it means that uh, Miscanthus does not produce seeds and uh, this plant is not able to, sp to spread all around just, you know, like... Okay, so it's basically, it doesn't spread. You're controlling where it grows and it's very yeah. easy to control. So the exactly. other... Exactly. The other thing about miscanthus, it also can grow on marginal lands, and that's this is number four. Yeah, so as far as uh, miscanthus is grass, actual grass or reed, yeah, uh, it can grow on marginal lands. Uh, this is C4 type, uh, C4 uh, photosynthesis type uh, plant, and uh, the circle of its life span is. Um, Growing like uh, it's most efficient accumulation energy, yeah, and uh, it's growing. Then uh, part of biomass is falling down to the land in. Uh, it becomes a fertilizer for the next harvest. Exactly, and actually, it's feeding. Uh, this plant is feeding himself. Yeah, so you're you're cutting all the stems, but the leaves is going down and improving the soil quality. It's like a zero waste so, management system, right? For exactly. <laughs> so growing miscanthus actually improving soil and. Uh, there are a lot of scientific reviews and uh, R and D, and it's it's so then, a scientific fact, you know. So, Sergey, let's go to number five. In my view, I'm gonna guess again. You you you'll tell your number five, but for me, the uh, miscanthus per hectare captures five tons of carbon. At for, least five. At tons. least five tons for is that number five for you as the biggest one? Of yes. The so, uh, miscanthus is, is the most efficient uh, plant in terms of carbon sequestration and storage just to compare it accumulates uh, at least four times more uh, of carbon comparing with forest if wow you take ordinary, forest. Ordinary. so that means yeah, that so one hectare of so if one we, hectare if, of forest accumulates <laughs> four times less than one one hectare of this campus so does it mean that basically uh basically if we are able to start industrial industrializing miscanthus grows on marginal lands we can really cut down on global deforestation around the world exactly exactly so it's another huge benefit of course so basically if just to uh, to put a little resume on our five points this is what united nations is seeking for countries to do around the world basically what the perennial grass can do and basically achieve those goals in the shortest period of time in my view all right and uh it's very important that uh Ms. Campos also is called tolerant i mean there are a lot of grasses uh perennial grasses you can find uh, in the south yeah but Ms. Campos perfectly suits uh, let's say european or u.s continental condition i mean it survives like minus 20 in winter so and you now can grow it all yeah, over the world but this is the first this is the first step in a very long supply chain and i want us now address the uses of miscanthus because there's so many numerous uses where we can implement uh, use the biomass and i'd like you to go through a bunch of industries how we can use miscanthus after it's grown well uh, 75 77 percent of miscanthus content is actually cellulose and well you know you can do with cellulose whatever you want the most stupid stupid pathway is to burn it of course well but anyway you can use number one you can use miscanthus biomass as uh, the source for generating of energy i mean heat electricity etc yeah number two you can use miscanthus biomass in construction material you can use it in uh, green concrete production you can use it in uh, high density boards or medium dense density boards talking production. about global massive industries right so you can build actually houses from miscanthus so there are in europe there are a lot of examples when people are building just uh, houses building cottage uh, let's say small villages uh, from this campus keep right? going with industries i'd like to i'd like people to hear more about the industries yeah more. number three i believe this is uh, non-woody cellulose and non-woody uh, paper and uh, uh, pulp so uh, you can use miscanthus for cartoon production, for biodegradable packaging material production. And uh, miscanthus uh, at least five times more efficient in terms of energy uh, consumption comparing with wood. So then we are coming to... Go with industries, yes. <laughs> exactly. So uh, number four, I believe this is uh, liquid uh, fuels. It's bioethanol. 
and because this campus has a very small content of silica this is non-organic metals here only two percent so it's much more efficient uh, compared with straw for example yet yeah, to uh, produce uh, spirit uh, spirit to set or not yes and then we are coming to other chemical let's say high added value uh, products like selenium xenon and uh, also as far as Miscanthus has 18 percent of uh, lignin so we are coming to natural polymer okay well so, this is i mean this is amazing what this culture that's been around for so long and it's so underutilized and what potentially has to cut down on greenhouse emissions uh, to capture carbon and basically uh, or just uh, change the global economy from being dirty to being clean and being natural Right, but uh, you see, it's very important that uh, you can grow it locally and you can process it locally. Correct. So I mean, this is why I want to come back to Ukraine specifically. Ukraine obviously is a very large country with a lot of land and known for its agriculture. Uh, we already talked about that we can use, you know, Chernobyl lands to grow miscanthus, and sure. you're working on that. Uh, but I wanted to uh, ask you a specific question: Why do you believe that Ukraine is so well positioned to be the leader, or as we call it, of green oil of 21st century? in the world of producing biomass and then spitting out or, or basically having a multiplier effect of spitting out industries uh, creating jobs for local municipalities well uh, perfect uh, climate conditions uh, a lot of marginal uh, lands uh, officially as per data from ukrainian government there are at least four million hectares of land which is abandoned or marginal or not not not, not so productive in ukraine yeah uh, number three ukraine uh, well actually agricultural uh, country yeah people are doing agriculture since i don't know how many thousand yeah. years and uh, uh, of course uh, this uh, will facilitate this kind of uh, industrial cultivation because you can combine, you can grow on the productive lands food. Uh, and meantime, in the same area, you can grow miscanthus. You can use the same machinery. But, but more big, the, the, bigger, the bigger effect, Ukraine has an opportunity to bring industries to Ukraine because biomass is going to be logistically, economically unfeasible to drive different places. So you have to develop uh, a product somewhere locally, correct? Exactly. You can just process miscanthus locally, as I said. And, and Ukraine uh, has all. Uh, necessary let's say conditions to be number one in uh, europe at the biomass stock supplier european Excellent. by economy and now let's come back to one of the most fascinating opportunities which i believe is within five to seven years will be a, a trillion dollar market is a market of carbon credits and carbon credits that are going to be annually produced by every hectare where miscanthus is grown but it's not only that we can capture carbon credits along the supply chain so speak towards the how critical this financial instrument is for municipalities of ukraine in order to generate more income uh, uh for themselves for the budget well it's very easy you have one hectare of miscanthus and uh, for sure every year annually uh, this one hectare will accumulate and store in land at least let's say four tons of co2 so uh, it is proven uh, by a lot of scientific researches and having miscanthus well <laughs> actually secures for you these four tons of uh, every, CO2 year, every year every year and so now, let's nothing special with, with, now in the same area we put a factory they're producing something of that biomass so now we are capturing additional carbon credits so the the city itself correct me if i'm wrong the city itself can have a system that where the carbon credit is being captured it can be, have additional be used as additional resource for the budget and do so exactly, yeah, exactly. Yes, so, because you can uh, theoretically and potentially you can trade with this co2 you know that uh, that's a, a lot of market, industries emitting emitting ghg greenhouse gas and they have limits for for, for these uh, emissions so somehow you can just simply and just, trade with them and just for people to understand what is the price of carbon credit today in the market well One now time. it's something around 100 100 dollars per, per ton of uh, carbon uh, 
Okay, so now let's let's come back, and I wanted to ask you a second question. Obviously, it's very critical. Uh, Ms. Cantus has a, a long lifespan. It's very critical for a small business to be involved in the industry as it's uh, it's an infancy. How do you see? As you know, we have set up an organization out of uh, United States, a non for profit called United Students of Ukraine, that now helps work using uh, providing working capital for the small business of Ukraine. But in this particular case, do you see a small guys getting involved in the industry to grow and process and do whatever with biomass as a whole of course well the small farmer in ukraine this is the guy who has like 100 hectares you know <laughs> so <laughs> half for food production and half for growing of energy i mean when you are cultivating this campus actually you you are producing energy for yourself it's the same like you have i don't know uh, gas uh, or pipeline or pipe well in, 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 a, in a way it can be energy independence for for your own home or for your own municipality exactly because actually two tons of uh, miscanthus biomass is equivalent to ten thousand cubic meters of gas wow so, yeah, this so is... if you have 20 tons of biomass per year right so per hectare so that's, that's huge it. But let's talk quickly about this uh, uh, one more time because I wanted to understand because now, as we as you said that, it, it is in my view. So somebody with a hundred hectares in your example can use fifty of that hectares to have a nursery uh, that allows for bigger players to come in and then put in the ten thousand hectare when it grows to the fields. Also possible. Well, Miscanthus propagates only uh, vegetatively, so the most common. Uh, way of propagation is so-called uh, rhizome division when you are planting uh, miscanthus and then after three years you are lifting the, the right. plant getting cutting these uh, roots yeah, and getting this planting material so, so yes, again could be this, like this. this is great because this is something the united states of ukraine will be very much excited to get behind because we can potentially get a lot of farmers around the world we work with every mayor uh, in ukraine and to basically give them the opportunity to very quickly set up a nursing facilities that would grow into much bigger operations later on and earn money for a small farmer so, right but also don't forget that uh, without universal feedstock uh, it is not possible to build by economy i mean if Absolutely. we have such all comes down. Teams and you know zero natural uh, states etc etc well you have to secure feedstock correct and this is how to secure feedstock just the best our, way is to grow one of our crops. projects as you know one of our projects is a 24 megawatt biomass energy plant a uh, power plant and that is fascinating think about it if they secure the feedstock at the nursery level they will guarantee the cost of their supply for 20 years and that's yes. un unheard of in the industry of energy uh, production so sergey this was absolutely fascinating i do as you know you and i've been working on this for a long time and you obviously have invested your life into this this is uh, one of the biggest industries for ukraine uh, i am definitely going to be promoting it across and i want to thank you for your time thank you sergey thank you all the best